Setting up and using Instagram to communicate with your students and families during distance learning is really pretty simple. To start, you're gonna to wanna to download the Instagram app on your iPhone or Android device. It, there's not an, um, an Instagram app for the iPad and you can look at Instagram on the web, um, but you can't upload photos or interact with it in the same way. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to go to your app store on your smartphone and download Instagram there. If you are just signing up for Instagram the first time, there will be a button for you to click create account the very first time that you open the app. And you will just wanna walk through um, the prompts to set up your account. If you already have an Instagram account and you would just like to maybe create a second account to use with students and families at this time, you can do that as well. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you from here. So here I am in an Instagram account and I've clicked on my profile in the bottom right corner by selecting my picture. If I come up to the three lines or the hamburger buns in the top right corner, I can click on that and then choose settings, which is at the very top. And then if I scroll down, I can choose add account. And right here, if I already have a second account, I can just log in or I can also choose create new account. Now, those of you who just downloaded Instagram for the very first time, this should be a similar prompt to what you would see as well, if not identical, um, to create your account for the first time. So if you are creating um, a, a brand new username, I'll just say my teacher Instagram. Um, here it's telling me that this username already exists. So I might need to brainstorm a little bit to get something unique. Um, or I could, you know, add uh, Cincinnati. Let's see, that's probably pretty unique. Um, nope, it's not. So anyway, you wanna keep going um, until you find a combination that works until you get a little green check mark at the end. And then you'd click next and walk through the prompts. Uh, and you can skip all of those prompts. It's gonna to try to prompt you to follow other accounts and invite people to follow you. Um, so you can just skip all of that until you get there. Uh, a couple of things that I wanna note. One, you're definitely gonna to wanna to add a photo. Um, if you don't have a picture of yourself that you'd like to add, I recommend uh, adding maybe your Bitmoji, which is a character avatar if you use Bitmoji. Um, if you don't, then, you know, add a picture of your family or something to do with your content area that you teach or that might remind kids of your classroom or the school. Um, it definitely just adds that personal touch. Um, I really think that your actual photo is really probably the best way to go, especially if you're going to be connecting with, with students and families um, remotely for the first time using this account. They're going to want to see your face to know that they're following the right person. So if you click edit profile, if you don't do this during the initial account setup, you can always come here to change your profile photo um, and to change um, your add your name, any bio information that you'd like to add. Um, you can also change your username here as well too. So if you think of something after the fact that you'd like to go back and change, you can also try it here as well. And then click done when you're finished. Couple of quick settings that I'd like to point out. Um, up, we go back to the hamburger buns and choose settings. First, the notifications. Um, you may wanna choose how you receive notifications and what for. Do you want a notification every time someone likes a picture, every time someone comments, follows you, sends you a message, um, you decide. And then the last setting that I want to point out to get you started is the privacy. So by default, when you create your account, your account will be public. Most often I see um, educators with or, or professional accounts as public. This is completely up to you and any guidelines that your district may have set for you. Um, for myself, any time that I um, may post a picture of a kid, let me try to scroll, scroll here to find one. Um, if I'm posting pictures of kids, I usually try to post pictures from behind um, so that I don't have their faces in it. And if I ever get to a kid where I just can't avoid posting a picture of their face, then I always try to put a little um, smiley face sticker in front of their um, in front of their face so you can't see it. So sorry, I can't find one right now. Um, but if you do not um, 
if you are not worried about that, you can just leave it public. If you are worried about it, you know, especially at this time, you might specifically be using this tool to post pictures of other students in your class as a way for them to connect and, and feel bonded and connected to each other when they're not physically in the same classroom. So then you may want to change it to private. So public basically means that anyone on Instagram can see your photos. They don't have to be following you. If I click account privacy and I toggle this on, um, uh, then it is going to switch me to a private account. So that means that now I have to approve any follower uh, so that they can see my pictures. So you may want to collect um, fam your family's, maybe your, your kids' Instagram handles or um, maybe their parents so that you could approve them and know exactly who's following you and then only approve those in, um, you know, of the families and students in your class. So again, that's totally up to you in your district, um, but that is how you can change that privacy, um, particularly if you want to um, protect the students. So outside of settings here, um, to add pictures, I would um, come to this little plus sign in the middle of the screen. You should see it anywhere on Instagram. And then you can choose from um, any post that you, or any picture that you have in your camera roll. If you are going to maybe post pictures that other, um, maybe you're gonna have students or families send in pictures again, so maybe you could share those out to other kiddos in your class. You might wanna have them email it to you. Um, and then you would need to download or save that picture from your email on your phone to the camera roll on your phone. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you can reach out to somebody for help, um, and I'm sure that they would be able to help you figure that out. But once you have the picture saved on your phone, um, then you can just choose that. You can also choose the photo or video button down at the bottom to actually take a photo um, right there. But once you have the photo that you like, you'll click next. You can add, this is what's called a filter, um, which basically is just um, uh, adding like, different uh, visual elements to the photo. You don't have to do anything with a filter. If you wanna get crafty, you can play with that on your own. Choose next. And then here you might want to write a caption, um, which is basically just gonna show up right underneath the photo. And then when you're finished, you have it all set up the way you want, then you will just hit the share button and then it will post to your um, profile and it will show up underneath the home button of anyone who is following you. So when I click my home button, this is everyone else that I am following on Instagram so I can see their pictures. If I see something that I like, I just tap it twice or tap the heart right underneath the photo, and then it will um, share that I like that picture. I can also choose to add a comment by clicking the little comment bubble or clicking add comment right here. Post, and there we go. Now I just uh, commented on Jimmy's photo. So hopefully that was a, a good uh, picture that I just said I loved. Um, so this is where I can see everyone. And then this, uh, for your families this is where your posts would show up. If you're searching to follow anyone or looking for any hashtags, you just click the magnifying glass and then you search at the top. And then, um, the heart is the last little menu item left. So any, these are all of the notifications. So anytime someone starts to follow you, um, particularly if you are on private, this is where it would show up that they've requested to follow you and you could approve them. This will show you if anyone has liked your pictures or if they have commented on your photos. Um, if for some reason you want to uh, delete a comment, If I just tap on the comment, then you can slide your finger over and then choose the little trash can if for some reason you um, you know, wanna delete those comments. I can also like an individual comment by clicking on the little heart next to um, the uh, Susanna's comment here. 
And then the last thing that um, I want to show you that you may be interested in is the stories. So all these little icons or, or profile photos at the top are um, individuals who have posted to their Instagram story. And an Instagram story is a picture or a video that you post that's only available for people to see for 24 hours. So to post a, to your story, if you click the little camera icon in the top left, this is where you can find um, the, the story to capture a picture. If you just hold down the record button, it will take a video the entire time that you're holding that button down. Um, if you wanna flip your camera around, which I am not going to do since it's work from home, I think we all uh, know what that feels like a little bit right now. Um, but you just click the camera with the little arrows uh, in the bottom right corner and it would turn my camera around and then you would see my face instead of my computer desk. Um, and then down here at the bottom, you'll notice different options. These are just different, um, things that you can do in Instagram. If I scroll all the way to the left on live, then I can actually choose to stream live. So if I would hold down this live button, it is actually going to um, give a little notification to any of my followers on Instagram that I'm going live. And that basically means um, a live stream video and my, my kiddos or our families could actually watch it live in real time as I'm talking to them or whatever I'm showing them. Um, and then uh, they can actually comment and I would see those comments in real time. So I could essentially communicate with them in real time. So if you do the live option and, and really with anything that you're going to post, um, just be cognizant. I always, my, my thing is what I want this to show up on the front page of a newspaper, um, you know, because things can get taken out of context. So don't be paranoid, um, but do use, you know, your professional discretion and just kind of think about, you know, what's in the background, what can they see, um, you know, what double check for any autocorrect of spelling um, for your captions and different things. But um, other than that, Instagram can be a really great tool uh, to help our families feel connected in some way right now. So um, reach out if you have any questions and everyone stay healthy.